Welcome back, English learners, followers, and the world at large. Today, I'm going to get right to the point. English is a phenomenal language to learn, and it is a joy to master. For some, simply knowing a few words that can get them by and express themselves clearly is the goal. But for others who really want to come off as a master of English, you'll start to learn, and you should want to learn, different ways to say similar things. Today, we're going to talk about the subtle nuances and variety of different ways to compare and contrast objects, ideas, or even your own opinion. Today's phrases and words are all about comparing and contrasting. This is something that everyone does in their native language, and specifically in English, there are numerous ways, both simple and a little bit more advanced, different ways to compare and contrast your ideas, your statements, objects. These are great for writing, it's awesome for work, and it specifically will suit you if you are studying to take an English exam our placement exam to show your fluency. Now, before we get into it, please, as always, click the like and subscribe. It really helps a small channel like mine, and it also helps me to form different content for you in the future. Number one, contrast. Contrast is a noun, and it essentially means a striking difference in something that is in close association or juxtaposition to the objects you are comparing. Here's an example. The contrast in the New York office versus the LA office is very noticeable, and the employees are starting to get a little disgruntled and upset. So what are we saying in this example? We're highlighting a big, are huge and noticeable difference between the two offices. And we're also saying that people are starting to get a little pissed. Number two, differ. It means to be unlike or dissimilar. Here's an example. The two companies differ considerably. One sells to the wholesale market, while the other one only sells to retailers. Number three, differentiate. Differentiate is also a verb, and it means to recognize or highlight a difference between two things. Here's an example. It's difficult to differentiate between employees who need a sick day because they're genuinely ill and those who just needed to or wanted to take a day off for their personal well-being. In this example, we're saying that it's hard to figure out the difference between the two scenarios. Are people really taking off because they're sick, or did they simply need a day to relax? Number four is a word I'm sure you've heard before, characteristic. Here, we're going to use characteristic as a noun, and it essentially means a feature or quality or a distinguishing feature or quality that describes or identifies a person, place, or thing. Here's a brief example. Our new software program shares common characteristics with the programs that are already on the market. Here, we're simply stating that there are some commonalities between our software in the software of our competitors in the market. Number five is one of my favorites. It even sounds like a strong word. Distinction. Here, we're gonna use distinction as a noun, and it pretty much means excellence that sets someone or something apart. There's a clear distinction between starting your own business and taking over one that already exists. Here, we're saying there's a clear difference between these two ideas, and we're also hinting at the fact that one, starting your own business, is better. 
distinction. Here's one that I'm sure you are familiar with. Compared. Compared we're going to use as a verb here and it's pretty much means to estimate, uh, to evaluate or note the similarities or the differences between two items. A quick example. Home PCs are much cheaper, faster, and have a way bigger amount of memory compared to the older models. The next one is a similar word. It's the noun form of compare. It is comparison. It is a estimate or an evaluation of the differences and similarities between two things or two people. A brief example. Those two products are different in every way. There's absolutely no comparison between the two of them. Wow, we're already at number eight. Number eight is resemble. It's a verb and essentially means to have similar qualities in appearance or to look or seem alike. A quick example. Our cell phones resemble the cell phones of our competitors, except our latest models have more features and are more reliable. Number nine. Similarities. It's the state or fact of being similar. For example, there are several similarities between our new copier and the old one, specifically the coloring system and the multitask option. The next one is a phrase, in the same way. In the same way is a phrase used to point out that something or someone is using the same method or process. Let's look at an example. Serious computer hackers can access your personal files and in the same way they can access your internet files as well. Likewise. Likewise is an adverb that we use to introduce a similar point that is similar to a point or an idea that we just made. One example, the quality of our products is excellent and likewise the price. Example two, just water these plants twice a week and likewise the plants in the bathroom. Example three, I don't have time to be spending all of this energy on this new project. Hmm. Likewise, me neither. I don't have any time. In these examples, we're simply stating that there's a similarity between a previous point that's made. For the last example, you saw that it was a little bit different. Someone goes, ah, I don't have time for this. And the second person just responds, likewise, which means same for me. I don't have time for this either. The next one, a little bit more advanced here, by way of contrast, by way of contrast. This one is a prepositional phrase. For example, they spent $5 million on ads. By way of contrast, my company only spent $2,000 on ads. Here, we are simply stating a difference and we're doing so just to make a point or reference the significance. They spent $10 million on ads. Is that a lot? Hmm. By way of contrast, we spent only two, only $5,000. By way of contrast, it gives us a reference point for a scale of the significance between the differences of two different things. Here's another advanced one. Despite, it means without being affected by. You may hear someone say, in spite of the example. The company didn't perform very well last quarter, despite managing to turn a profit. 
Here, we are saying that the overall final result did not meet satisfaction, even though there was an identifiable positive outcome, managing to turn a profit. Here's a great word to use and master. Discrepancy. It's a noun and it means an illogical or a surprising lack of compatibility, a surprising lack of similarity between two people or two things. Example. Hmm. There seems to be a large discrepancy between the sales figures that were reported and the profits that we received. In this example, we're simply talking about or identifying a significant difference in those two reports that we did not expect to see. Here's an expert level one, the final and 15th word and expression to use. Whereas, by contrast or comparison with the fact. Whereas, it's one word, it's an advanced word, and it's typically used in legal jargon. This could be used by a judge or a lawyer who's working on documents or proof of points that they are comparing or they are contrasting. Let me try my best attempt at an example. I'm not a lawyer, I am a teacher and previously a government worker, but let me try. For example, our new contract states that both parties need to give a six month notice for any termination, whereas our old contract did not have a clause around termination. Whereas, this example, whereas, is a conjunction that connects and compares the first and last clause, the difference between the two contracts. So that's it for today. I will leave here, and I'll pause this, but I'll leave here a list of all of the 15 words that we discussed. Pause the video. Take a look at all of these words. Make a mental note, take notes, and then fast forward to the end of the video where I'll be giving out a review quiz and a couple items for you to practice to make sure that you remember and master these words to compare and contrast. Good luck on the quiz. It's a fill in the blank, multiple choice. If you have any questions, please email me. I will leave it in the comment section as well as the overview for the video and subscribe and like. This way I can continue to teach you items, phrases, words, and other English skills that you may need. Take care and good luck.
Thanks again for watching. If you haven't done so already, please click the like and subscribe. It definitely helps me to spread the word and to find students such as yourself in the future to assist with their journey to mastering English. This is Peyton, the English coach, and you are watching the channel for Speak English NYC. Take care and peace out.